to see you. Thank you very much for making time and I can use uh, English and Jean. Uh, you can say Zapin to sit and everyone sit down so I think everyone knows Zapin means. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got that point that you can mix any dialect and language. And uh, I'm so impressed that you saw us this morning and early morning is on the show and the chat didn't have a program and I really, really wanted to see you. You guys are rising generation, truly is the star generation of our people, your generation coming up. And I see around the world a young chief generation are so intelligent, so smart, and got called in and uh, in the circle around the world. And this is your time. Your parent generation is a little bit older and we cannot catch up for generation change and cultural change and adaptation too much. This need is more than enough to decide everything. But your generation, God has given you far uh, better and for advanced opportunity with global access and resources and uh, the support system you have is so much I know. So the first thing I wanted to share with you this morning, read scripture is that first <clears throat> John 3 says, see what God great what great love the Father has loved on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world doesn't know us is that it did not know him. Beautiful. Now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Praise God. Amen. So this morning, two sessions, and three sessions, I told you, I would like to share with you. So we're going to finish by before 9 or 11 o'clock, okay? So, I came from America, so I stick to time, so. <laughs> I don't say you don't, so. Uh, I mean, we've got to finish from 11 o'clock. First thing I wanted to share with you, God calls us to children. children. Then, okay, if I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God, then where should I strive everything? Where should I go to college? Should I go to college or work somewhere? Does it change anything? First thing I will share, not just me and the uh, educational ways. Being a child of God, we still have to pursue, we still live in this world, in a broken system, broken world. So we still need to go to college and do something on this job ways. And this is, uh, I would like to share the first thing about the, the education, where, uh, where we should go to college and further education. Or, if you don't, if you don't even don't go to further education in college, you still have to prepare the best way God has given us opportunity to be the best who we could be. So we all are made, created by God and saved by Jesus Christ and called children of God. First thing, I would like to share my testimony. This is the village I was born. You know? I village around, oh so this is spelled with air or something, you may see it, just regard it. <coughs> My village is what? It's, it was like 15 houses, removed from far distance from Palam to India, about two miles away. I just walked about two miles a day to Palam. And there was no school. I had to walk six miles a day to finish my elementary school. Kindergarten to fifth grade or uh, fourth grade, five years. I just cried all the morning. <laughs> and no clinic, no church building, no grocery store. My parents were non Christian. They believed evil spirit. That's a family we work. Early morning, my mom just warm up rice cooked yesterday and boiled eggs. And we have nine siblings, always like four or five. Sibling goes together. Other morning, he will take one egg, she got like four or five pieces of that, and he gave, she gave us, and that's the way we, we grew up. Very poor. I mean, I grew up in the poorest of the poor. 
finished. This is my family now, and it's a Ginny Meng and Moses Meng. Ginny Meng already finished physical engineering from Purdue University. He's obviously started working there. So again, uh, Moses Meng is a five year psychologist, college right now. I mean, the, the hardness, the top, black situation. You may be here, I know a lot of you. Um, all of you might have a desire. Oh, I, if I have a better parent, wealthier family, if I have a sports system. My son asked me that I didn't have a family sports system, but where I wanted to go and what I wanted to be. I wanted to be, oh, I'm sorry, son. But I know if you came down to my place in some way, I grew up. You may not blame me. I told him. So uh, but I made a decision. I wanted to become somebody, I wanted to go to college. When I graduated high school, I was crying, like literally crying in my bedroom. Because I wanted to go to college, but I didn't have money. My parents don't have money. Parents is farmers. They sell pigs and chickens and eggs and rice and like about five Not dogs in Myanmar. So I was crying. I prayed by God. I wanted to go to college and have at least many more one fast degree. So God led me to the way. And uh, so he gave me a chance to grow up and learn something. I felt many times, you know. You may feel today, ah, I am not good enough to my parents or society, church or friends. Uh, in Myanmar, it's not like in Canada and the US. We have like six subjects in high school. If you fail one subject, you fail everything. By the end of the year, we have to do a tactic examination. I fell two times. I fell in Flamont, first time, and then go move to Hakka from high school and fell again. And at that time, I took high school exam and I passed. I keep moving. When I, I mean, I fell many times, but I still keep moving. It doesn't matter. Failure will teach you the best thing people cannot teach you. It's painful sometimes. Sometimes it's shameful. But keep moving. Believe God, pray, and live with your prayer. Keep moving. I fell my parents. I ran away, uh, I ran away from my parents. I disobey my parents. Sometimes you may have a hard time obeying your parents. But there's that one experience about that. It's not you. I ran away from my parents. I ran away from God. And I ran away from my country. But God has been chasing me down to the belly or on the top of you. He found me here, wherever, wherever I was. So today I strongly believe that God has called you, everyone, that's where you saw this. You've got a bright future. God has a bright future for you. It's just a discovery and working to the path. But working to the path doesn't have to be like straight forward or upward. It's always like sometimes up and down. So I finished my degree. I did finish my bachelor's degree in India and master degree in India. This was like, I just made a caption like, small like a bridge. <laughs> when I had a first college degree, I could not believe that I would one day have a degree. I could not believe myself. But I finished it, so I was smiling like a prince. <laughs> it's a bachelor of degree. Yeah. Second degree, I got a master. Yes, uh, what is that? Uh, this is master of theology and this is a PJ. I finished political science in New York. I, so I finished my master's degree in India, but I still refused to suck on this pastor. I never thought that I would ever, ne ever, ever become pastor because I don't see, I don't see myself as a fit to be pastor at all. Still today, I don't see myself as fit to stand before you and speak about God. But God is it fit enough to make me stand before you. Amen. Praise God, amen. amen. Believe that you may not think yourself fit enough to lead your people or share the gospel to the world around the world. But God is fit and God's voice enough to make you able to share the gospel, stand for the people, lead other people, your children, change the history of Satan. As I shared with you, my parents were non-Christian. 
I'm a child of the Indian Christian. I even became a Christian born again before my parents. So God led me the way through. So then I came to America. I did my, finish my political science bachelor degree in New York in 2002. And four, four year course, I finished two years. And then I go to Indiana, Indiana University. And then uh, I finished my Master of Public Affairs, Public Administration, Indiana University. And then later on, I did my PG, PG in leadership from Tennessee Temple University in the US. The reason I share with you is that, you know, I was in the bottom of the society of the world. Burma is one of the poorest country. Out of Burma, 14 states and region, Chin State the poorest. In the Chin State, I live in the smallest village, the poorest village. I agree. In my village, many of them are Christian, but my family is not Christian. So I was born at the bottom of the wall. But God raised me up. Okay. So the reason I share my testimony is that where you are, you may think it's far below what you want to do today. But God is able. Okay. Amen? Amen. I will be able to share with you the way you God call it. You know, it's the plan that the Southerners, they live long. Do you believe that? What, what I share this is, you know, when I try to dig on I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, this is data, this is data, they make research, and people who don't finish college, and people who finish college, they should compare it carefully. People who hold degree, but some people they live long. See? This is comparative data. It's a, some, a 15, 1998 EU, 2015. It's between 25 years range. They will make research. Then. This is the, the corner, the blue is the majority of the The lowest are less than high school, far below. So you know how to read data, right? Your spies, uh, students. Why is that? Why is that? Call it degree. Can college really make live longer? And I, it, it means when they go to college, they, they learn how to eat the best food, or how to live in society, how to adjust, how to overcome struggles. It's a lot, still they learn a lot, this way they live longer. So we believe, okay, I'm a child of God, I don't have to have a degree. Yeah, God can use anybody, but for the more you prepare yourself, God can use you even more. That's sensibly, is it? So everyone agree? Can you, do you agree with the status of data? People who have college degree live long in America, in society, it's real world data. <coughs> and what happens is that we have to raise the, the social status right now. Our people in make that terrible, I don't know if pro pronounced correctly, the Vancouver, our children, parents, mostly 99% or 95%, 90% cannot go to college. Because as soon as they arrive here, they have to work hard day and night for the best living, shelter, food, and clothing. Or if you go to college, for high school, go to school, you need shoes, car, food. They have to spend all hours for working, meeting their best need. So the problem is, if your generation don't take a challenge and move to the next level, and your children will have a harder time to go to college. Statistical data shows that people who don't have college degree, your children have a harder level of reaching next level, finishing college. So if you want your children finish college degree, you do fast. Finish college degree. That's our children people, we cannot. Hey, this first generation, whatever available job, we take it, we work up, we work ethics, so good, top of the society, top of the company. That's a good thing. However, we cannot keep working for the lower level, blue collar job in the Western country. In your generation, you're going to take office job, manager, supervisor level, and company owners and governments, society, at top level. And then also, People who have job, they get, uh, who have the degree, bachelor degree, they, have, they get easy job. Comparative, see? 
The top is the doctorate degree. Education is being prepared. Comparatively speaking, people who have, okay, somebody says, somebody tell me, hey, uh, I finished college and I work for the company and I have, I get paid, I, I've been raised up to supervisor level, manager level. By four years, I become supervisor, manager, and then I have family, baby, house, nice car, good pay. And then my friend go to college for four years and uh, when he finished college, with 90,000 student loan and zero uh, cash in the bank and then have to find out somebody for uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, no, no family, so totally zero. Okay, I'm far better. So I have job, supervisor, manager, I have house, nice car, $50,000 in bank and I have better and then my friend had to work under my feet. Somebody is talking. That's my child. Okay, right. At the moment, they need the truth. But a longer period, when you feel, you look down the future 20 years down the road, your friends will be about you. You walk to the city, city house, or you walk to the parliament house, your friends and you hold hands together and walk to the house, and you tell yourself who you are. I'm a high school graduate working as a supervisor in a warehouse or factory. Your friend tells who you are, I'm high school uh, maturity, political science graduate, or civil engineer. I work as a manager or CEO at that company. Down the road in the future, you have to see the future, so you have to work hard on that. It's, sometimes it's not easy to go to college. Yeah. I know we, have, we don't have a parent support system like your friends at school. I went to college in, in New York. Sometimes I cry, almost cry, or sometimes really literally cry because I'm too tired, I'm too tired. I took like pretty a lot more than my friend. I, I work at college campus at cafeteria. I know how to make fast food. If you come and visit our church, okay, I can make what you fast food like. It can be either or uh, whatever, just come on uh, like to move to Hilton and uh, make all those sales. I, I know how to make those things. So I mean, it's hard sometimes. Check it out here, the PCDLA. Okay. In job ways, the third degree portals are half. It's likely to be employed as they appear who only have high school. In employ unemployment rate, high school graduates are more double unemployed than the people who hold degree. So that's why we have it's a far better. That's the income. I already mentioned about income. People who have degree is in 2016, not today, it's almost 10 years back. So now it's today's far more income. In US, people who have high school level in the other high town, they make 1 million and 300,000 approximately research base. It's a source of Georgetown University research in 2016. It's not that what they think is about real data research. Thousands of people. And then people who have college degree have like 2 million and 268, almost double in real lifetime earning. So the first time, the first four or five years, you make far better money, but the long 20 years, 30 years, your friends will make double or more than you. If you finish stuck with high school, that's the real data source. But I don't, I don't need that to discourage people who don't go to college, but a real data is the reality. But everyone can go to college if you want, really want. This is the real data. High school level, 1 million, 300,000. And the degree, advanced degree means uh, and there's a bachelor degree, 2, two million more. And advanced degree means a master degree more. Yeah, that's a lot more, far more as income wise. So this is data. Bachelor degree and some high school. The lowest is some high school. A certain degree of high school grade. People who don't uh, you can need the data, right? This is practically this is real data. So you want your children and you and your children, your family to be financially from the lowest in the society to the next level, middle class level. So the education is one thing. We have everyone has opportunity. I came to the USA when I uh, when I was like 
two years old. That two of them, the three, I don't remember exactly. And college students were like 18, 20 years old. We were sitting together in undergrad. But they thought my age was like 20 or something. <laughs> And how difficult it was for me to come to study in the US. I finished my bachelor degree and master's degree in India. And I also go to Delhi University <coughs> and finished the course for a bachelor degree of commerce. I, I was in low college in Iowa for one year. I came to the US the first semester of six months. I don't know how to speak in a classroom. I sent my mom Class mom. Where is that? When I talk in a classroom, Nobody understands me. I only understand myself. <laughs> <laughs> because my language. <laughs> Everyone's looking, what are you talking? <laughs> okay, it's not better for me not to speak at all. It's just sort of my own my opinion. You know, I thought I know. You know, while I was in India, you know, some of my friends talked to me, like, what do you think you English? Your English is very good. You speak American language, English. I came to America and nobody understood me. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I moved, I moved to Indiana and I worked for a step in Indiana for seven years. Because it's a government job. I was called talking to another guy from the other name of the phone line. This was lady. <clears throat> I, I don't know who the heck is that guy. You know, <clears throat> this lady, she asked me, hey, do you have somebody who speaks English in your office? <laughs> And what about you? Do you have somebody who speaks English in your family? I ask him. <laughs> <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that language, culture, I have a hard time. I have many friends, many friends. I mean, I was in club, political science association in, uh, what, it, what do you call it? I don't remember. I was just honor roll, uh, honor society, political science honor society. I was a member of that. We just have problems. And then they share a funny job and a comedian and some, something to love, something to love. But, and when I start sharing, they don't laugh. I tell my friend, I'm sharing, I'm making jokes, and you have to laugh, you're supposed to laugh. Laugh! <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is that, I have got a problem. They love me, my friend loves me, but they don't understand my language many times. I mean, it's not only you and me alone. Everyone, Americans have that experience. <coughs> so this is uh, a personal degree and annual income. This is annual income, okay? See, no high school diploma was like, it's in uh, for almost 10 years ago. Okay, 2011, so 2011 is uh, more than enough. Uh, USC. So 11 years ago, the real data in America. No high school average income, median income, not average, is median income is 24,000 a year. High school graduate, 39,000, almost 40,000 in America. All household and bachelor degree, median income is $78,000 a year. In America, and personal degree means like at least master degree or doctor or lawyer. Or they have at least hundred twenty thousand a year. They make money. So that's real data. You, you you have a decision to make. Your decision. Nobody 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 can stop you when this you decide. Your determination does matter. It's not your parent. And uh, when I came to America, no, my parents told me, no, a penny at all. I got two years scholarship program, full scholarship program. But after that, for three years, my study I work, I had to work myself. I took student alone, had to work my, and support my family. Oh, 
house full of them. And I walk at the I work out so what do you want to write your story? That's your history. Nobody can write down your history. History. You are the one to write down. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the John Martin Luther King Jr. said, I think all of you know and study about him. The black civil rights movement. He was a pastor, a reverend. He said, if anyone ever found it, the reason to die and to live for. A reason to die means anyone haven't found that he's coming right on his own headstone. He haven't started living yet. Because of the unfortunate So, discover what you're going to write on your headstone. I'll write one day, mostly sooner than you. I know what I'm going to write. God knows that. But you don't have to know, figure out what you're going to write down, scrap the paper, sit down and wait. But you will leave something far <clears throat> Philippians 4, 5 says, I can do all through Christ who strengthens me. Means it, we don't know everything, we don't know tomorrow. But what you may say, I don't know tomorrow, but I don't have to know everything. God doesn't have to tell me everything because I know my life in the same. So believe, pray, and believe in the morning, and focus on his future. Not focus on the social media or what other people say. Sometimes social media is not wrong. I have a social media account. I think one of the most, uh, one of the person who use social media most of my chief pastor. I have a Facebook account. He went to check my name is Freddie Mann. And uh, I have like 16,000 followers on Facebook account. Instagram I have like um, a post like one uh, this one picture I will post on Instagram. I have Snapchat and as I share. I don't have that many friends on Snapchat. I just have only myself. I don't know just chat myself have a touch. <laughs> My son asked me, hey, why don't you use TikTok? <laughs> so I created a TikTok account and I'm like, hey, you're gonna use it. Let me create a camera and I have a camera. I don't want to take TikToks out too much. Yeah, so, so much things uh, I don't need to see that. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, the most thing, nothing should distract your mind, your focus. Your time is my life worth to spend. Mm -hmm. Wait, don't waste it, sir. I always think if my time is spent, the, the, the way I think my value is if it has eternal value. If I can spend in social media, does it add to my eternal purpose or my life purpose? Where to make that decision? School fee, then this is a little bit irrelevant. In America, we have student loans and student federal grant. In, I think Canada, too, you have a lot of opportunity. Now, I will talk about sorry, so I'll just keep passing on. So today, I would like to encourage you to take further study in college. Make a decision yourself. What I wanted to way the reason I wanted to go to college is not that I want to get money. I want to know what people want. And then I want to know what I'm doing. I wanted to know. So that's what I presented by college. It's not for money. I want to live in a world where I know the people around me, about God, and about people, and the world. So knowledge is power. So we read the Bible. We have children of God. And the way we should go to God. Among 12 apostles, Paul was the most educated person. He was educated, 
like email, the score, legal score. We should call him if Paul lived today, Dr. Paul, legal expert of the day. So Paul wrote 14 letters in the New Testament. Most New Testament, more than half of New Testament written by Paul. So God is people who train themselves to learn the same. Job, if you got, but so if you got more global opportunity. If you don't, it's a little opportunity it's all limited. You may have to catch whatever job you find. But if you have a total degree and above, you have a global round of option in job wise. So let me ask you how many people make decisions to get this virtual degree. Can we all raise up? I would want to make this virtual degree. Can we all raise up? Come on, come on, let's come. I'm going to make it up at this virtual degree. Come on. Let's raise our hand higher. All this stand up, let's stand up. People, I'm, I'm in my lifetime, I'm going to get this virtual degree. Let's stand up, come on. It's good to say. In my lifetime, not tomorrow, but today. Who get the decision? Come on, guys. I'll let you see. People who want to go to college and who want to go to Mac, and it's much more I'm going to finish that tomorrow. Come on, Let's take a challenge, you know. John Jones, even me. Even me, you know. Don't think that you are not smart enough. I always get, I never get A grade boss, B or O. <laughs> because I don't want to be a problem. I ask my son, the young, the older boy, hey, don't you want to be on the top of the class? No, wait, it's too much pressure. As long as I can be your pass along. Okay. <laughs> the young guy I am, and I, I, the last minute guy I am, whenever I got assignment, I always postpone it and then stick with it until the last, the last of my life. You know, my life is more functional and active in one under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you are there, I don't know. Yeah. I always keep doing some of me and then the last, oh, I'm sitting still, oh, oh, That's oh. what I'm doing. But it's still, yeah, way about. Uh, you no, know, life is proper steps of choices. Let's understand and pray for it. Huh? I'm really happy that you make this. Remember, when you walk long way, all long way, there are challenges. But keep remembering. Whenever I test, I'm moving. I used to work full time, six months old, at work house in the day. When I, I moved to Indiana, I, did, I took full-time classes, and then I walked full-time to work at 11 o'clock, 11 p.m., morning, 7 a.m. I have I work full-time, I go to school full-time, I have family, I meet, I meet full-time. <laughs> and it's not that I'm proud, I promise. I still get engaged with trust and family too. You can do that. Because we have Jesus Christ, we have God. Amen. To standardize and powerize. People discriminate the world around there. They will discriminate you. It's not Canadian, it's not America, it's everywhere around When I worked, was in master student, I was working government, and the one who act with me, betrayed me, and reported to me to HR, they called me. I was almost explored myself. I never got anything that much. I know my friend. The HR department, and he called me. My face was on red like funny. But I didn't speak anything at all. And they suspended me three days. And within three days, I was so happy. I took my study and a financial course, and I passed my test, and I got a license for investment license. You can sell mutual fund stock market. And whenever hardship chance come, well, uh, the people try to defeat your destination. I did you really distract you. 
that God's will always be with you. Believe, pray, keep praying. You know, I used to drink sometimes, smoke sometimes, but I never stopped praying. There's one thing I never pray. Sometimes I didn't go to church, but I still pray. I said, a long time in the morning night, when I couldn't sleep, I got up and prayed, God, God, you know me. I feel in the time that you can reach your life as I pray. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for today. We come before you. You have brought us far on this end from our parents and grandparents' uh, land you have given us. We face many challenges here in school, at home, in the wrong society. Sometimes we don't have enough friends. Sometimes who we think our friends betray us and we let our parental spoil in societal spoil. And we need you, Lord, today. We make a decision that you leave us. As far as you lead us, we'll go with you. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit helping us to decide we're going to get a spiritual looking in our time. When we look future, we don't know the future, but you own the future. We don't know our life, but you own our life. And you never make mistakes. We know you know. We thank you, everyone in this room. Our failures are all done on the cross. And all of us must our sins are paid in full. And the sin, the record of our sins no longer can in your record. We thank you, God, for saving us and calling us the freedom calling and, and, and changing the world upside down. Beginning from us, we thank you, God. Guide us and protect us from all distractions the people will bring to us, against us. We commit ourselves, our life, and our destination, and our vision, and our, our part of our life. Whatever you call us, we will follow you. We will respond to you. We will walk Thank you, the Lord, for being with us today. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, sit down and let's talk another day.